Good morning. So this is week two on our Crochet Thursday, and we are finished with our cloth, our dishcloth, our wash rag, whichever one you're making it. And I wanted to show you, this is the 20 rows. And I told you I would show you how to finish it off and tie in those loose ends. So, you are at the end. You're going to go ahead and just finish up that last stitch and pull your yarn through. You're going to leave some length on it and you're going to cut your tail. And then you're going to loop it over like you would if you're starting your next stitch. Okay? Just like so. Pull it tight and that makes a knot. Okay? Now we are going to take our needle and we're going to thread it. Okay. So now we've got it threaded through. Like I said, we're just going to weave it in and out. And the more you crochet and the, the more you do, you can do designs and edging on your patterns. You can make scallops or little loops if you want in doing blankets and afghans and things you can make what they call blocking that kind of straightens all the edges and makes the blanket where it's not so stretchy and doesn't look ununiform so you're going to cut that extra little bit off when you're done and you see how nice that leaves that edge that's what you want okay so for crochet Thursday this was our single crochet okay now today we're going to be learning double crochet and as I was telling you before there is all different kinds of yarn out there see how pretty that is these make great gifts as well. You put those in a little gift basket. Going to be working with a different yarn today just so you can kind of see. This is a stretchy t-shirt type material that we're going to be using. You can use the cotton steel or you can use uh, acrylic for this. Totally up to you. But if you're going to be making something for the kitchen again, you want to make sure that you use the cotton. I'm doing this just for general purposes so you can see. So you're going to do your slip knot again. Again, you just pull it over, make your X, grab through that loop, pull it through. You've got your slip knot. All right, we're going to move it down to our hook. Today, I'm using the K hook, which is a six and a half. So I'm going to yarn over just as I would if I was doing the single crochet. Again, you want to make sure that your foundation stitch, your foundation row, is even. That you're keeping each one of your stitches very similar and uniform. Remember, you don't want to make it really big and sloppy. I'm going to show you like that. Because if you got some of your stitches nice, and then some of them really big and gaping, you're going to have a big gaping hole in your project. It's going to be very loose and sloppy, and that's not what you want. You also don't want to pull it so tight and stitch that you can't get that hook. I'm going to show you. That you can't get that hook through that thread. See, it don't want to go through. It's fighting it. So, again, make sure that your foundation stitches are uniform. Okay, I just crocheted a little bit of that foundation row to show you what I'm gonna be doing. Now today for the double crochet, what you do is you actually yarn over one before you go in the hole this time. But you also, not only that, you are going to chain two up from where you stopped. 
So say you do 20 stitches, you're gonna add two on, and then it's gonna turn upward. So what you do is you chain your two new stitches, you yarn over, remember you don't count those two stitches, you go to the third one, and you don't count the one on your hook either. Yarn over, go to that third stitch, put your hook in, yarn over again, and pull it through. You have three loops on your hook this time instead of two, like in single crochet. So what we're going to do is we're going to yarn over again. You're going to pull it through two stitches. Okay, now we have two more stitches on the hook. We're going to yarn over and we're going to pull through those two stitches. You see how that makes that stack up two rows instead of one? So you've got the row you started with and then the next row. So now... We're going to go to the next hole, but first we're going to yarn over. See, in single crochet, you just went straight into that loop. I'm going to show you the difference. See, it made it shorter. See how that does? Okay, so we're going to undo that. Now, like I said, you are going to yarn over first. Go into that hole, pull it through, three loops on the hook, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two more. Again, yarn over, go into your hole, yarn over again, go through two, and then go through two. Double crochet and single crochet are what you're going to use the most of anything when you're doing a project. Those are your basic standard stitches that you do. So again, we yarn over, go into the hole, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. All right, I'm going to meet you at the end, and then we'll be right back. Okay, we're back, and we have our first row done. Our foundation row is done. Now, when you are starting your next row in the double crochet, you're going to turn your work to start the next row. You're going to chain two. One, two. That takes us up and starts that next row. Then you yarn over again, go in the hole all the way through both sides. Remember that counts as the front and back post. You're gonna go through both of those. You yarn over again, you go through two, and then go through two. Yarn over, go in the hole, Go through two, go through two. We are doing the same thing all the way down the row. I'm going to show you something so you can see the difference, the real difference between the single crochet and the double crochet. Let me get to the end. My husband teases every now and then and doesn't call it crochet. He calls it crotchet. And he can chain a foundation row really good. He just has never taken it even any further and gone to the actual rows of crochet. But you can make projects for those who have a hard time crocheting or who have really bad arthritis. You can just use a foundation row and make it really long and eventually tie it off and you can loop it over and over and make a scarf out of it. I have seen projects like that. Okay, we are at the end. So now you can see the difference and you can actually see the two different rows are completed. Now, I'm gonna show you, and this is another reason I did different colors. So you can see the difference. This is one row. See the difference in the double crochet? In the rows, you can fit two single crochets in just one of the double crochets. And that doesn't matter that the hook's bigger. It doesn't matter what project you're doing whatever size your hook is, is still going to be a little bigger. 
See the difference? It's just taller. So four single crochets fit in two rows of the double crochet. And like I said, there's all different kind of projects you can do. So, so far we're reviewing, we have made a single crochet washcloth and we have learned the basic single crochet stitch and foundation stitch, which is what you use on every project that you start. Then we have learned double crochet now. So you're gonna practice that double crochet. You're still gonna weave in your ends on your project. Like I said, it's really a preference on whether you wanna do it while you're working on the project or wait and do it at the end, totally up to you. And you're practicing how you're holding your hook. So just like that. And you could follow that all the way out or you could clip it, but you wanna make sure you're going through at least five or six different pieces of stitch before you cut that tip off because Remember what we said, if we cut it next too close to the knot, it's gonna unravel the very first time you wash your project. Now, like I said, it doesn't matter if you're doing whatever kind of yarn. When you are double crocheting, again, I'm gonna show you one more time, you're still gonna yarn over, start your slip stitch, you're still going to do your foundation row And then you're gonna chain two to go up. So you'll yarn over, go into that third stitch, yarn over, go through the hole, yarn over, go through two, and then yarn over and go through the other two. And you're gonna do that every single time. Yarn over first, go into the hole, pull it through the loop, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. All right, I'm gonna do that again. Yarn over, go through the hole. Yarn over through the yarn, pull it through. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. And like I said, you can go on YouTube, look up all kinds of different stitches, all kinds of different patterns. But you can see it's looser. There's more spacing. And it's not gonna be as tight knit. And it's all on preference, and it all depends on what you're making as to whether you want it to be loose or not. And again, you're gonna practice your tension the whole time you're doing your project. But your, your um, homework for this week in Crochet Thursday is practicing the double crochet. Remember working on your foundation rows, making sure everything's uniform. Chain two to go up to the next row, turn your work, or you can turn your work, then do the double crochets. You just wanna make sure you turn it so that you're going the opposite direction. Now, some patterns call for you to do one thing on the front and then something different once you've turned your work. We're not there yet, but I just want you to be aware there are endless patterns, endless stitching. It just depends on what you're doing. And remember, don't be afraid if you forget, you know, like that stitch right there. You can put those chain stitch markers on your project. Again, just showing you the difference in the stitching. There is a difference. All right, guys, I hope y'all have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. And we will catch you again next week for our Crochet Thursday, Episode 3.